I've been writing Hyperland for over three years now and made countless mistakes along the way. Some devastating that completely ruined my setup and gave me the infamous Hyperland screen of death, and others a tad milder that only resulted in me not being able to log in for the next three days. Basically, I've made almost every single mistake that you can make when you are rising Hyperland, which is why I want to help you avoid them so that you can get your perfect setup faster and avoid wasting time. Now, as for the first one, we're going to be talking about not having a goal when rising. No goal. Now, the reason why I mention this is because goals are important, okay? If you hadn't already known. They're important because without them, we get lost. We don't know where to go. And if you don't know where you're going, any road is going to take you there. Imagine just pulling up to your airport, okay? And then getting a flight ticket and then hopping on any random flight and ending up somewhere like the north of Libya. Yeah, all that happened because you didn't check your flight ticket and because you didn't have any destination in mind, which is why it's very important to have a goal. Not just when you're hopping on flights, but when you're rising as well. And not just that, but without a goal, you end up wasting time building something that you don't even like at the end. Something more akin to Frankenstein than an actual Hyperland setup. And doing something like that not only wastes your time, but then also drains you by just making you completely demotivated by ending, having to look at your setup. Understandably, you're not going to be in the mood of doing any work whatsoever in that setup at all. Now, I have personally done this when I first got started with Rising X Window Managers, actually. So this is even earlier than the three years of Rising Hyperland that I mentioned. Basically, what I used to do was I just discovered the r slash Unix point subreddit. And so I used to go onto there and scroll through all the top posts. Everything looked very interesting, great, so on and so forth. The most popular window manager at the time was BSPWM. So I'd gotten that up on Arch Linux. And what I was doing was basically rising it. Now, because I didn't have a specific goal in mind and I just incorporated different parts of different setups that had completely different aesthetics and weren't supposed to be meshed together, what I ended up with was a complete Frankenstein of different color schemes, different design languages, and just complete and utter mess. The, what do you call it? The spacing between window borders, that was something that was a bit too much. The color scheme in one app doesn't match the other app, okay? And the GTK themes all messed up. And Polybar, we didn't have Waybar back then because of course it's an X environment. So Polybar had completely different colors and the theme wasn't even working and you can basically paint the rest of the picture. It was quite a disaster, which is why having a goal when rising is very important. Now, an example as to how you would set a particular goal might look something like this. Let's say first, okay, first of all, what, you, what you're going to want to do is define what exactly you want from your setup. So if it's a setup that you're going to be using for work, okay, most likely you're going to want something sleek, minimal, and corporate friendly. Now that, that might look something like this. Okay, most likely a dark background. Dark background, minimalistic colors, minimalistic colors, no anime wallpapers, because you're going to be at work. The last thing you want your coworkers to know is that you're a big weeb, okay? Lest you, they, lest they start making fun of you for that as well, right? So dark background, minimalistic colors, no anime wallpapers, and you can add in a couple of other requirements that you have for a setup that you would most likely be using on the job. Perhaps something like minimal modules when it comes to Waybar or not having any notifications because they get in the way, so on and so forth, right? So you define what exactly you want inside of a file somewhere or you write it down on paper if you like that more. You do that and then once you have that done, all that's left is to just go and implement that particular setup when rising Hyperland by using all of the different tools that are available at your disposal. One is going to be Hyperland itself, which is your main, like, you know, your main Wayland compositor. After that, you have your status bar, which you can implement with a bunch of different themes. Like if you wanted to go for an ultra minimal one, you can do this. Or if you wanted something more subtle, even more minimal, you can go with something like this. Or you can keep something like this, which has the Material U Island style modules that still do look pretty minimal. Okay, the choice is yours. You do all that, and eventually at the end, what you're going to get is not a Frankenstein, but a pretty setup that actually looks pretty sweet, slick, and decent. And by the way, if you want to learn how to make a theme switcher like this one, that basically changes your theme to any theme that you choose inside of a switcher like this one, along with a wallpaper switcher that has a different transition so that you can actually tell, okay, with contrast, not just that, but then this Waybar theme switcher that you saw as well over here, 
you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program where I show you exactly how you can make stuff like this from scratch without copying anybody's dot files so that in the event that something does break, you're able to fix it immediately and not in days or weeks. So if you want that, you can go ahead, click the first link and check out this program. So as you can see over here, it's over 10 hours of content, which I have compiled over my three years of rising Hyperland and over four years of rising just compositors and window managers in general. So as you can see over here, this is what we have. So inside of this theme switchers module alone, it's two hours long. And in this two hours, I teach you exactly how you can go about making something like this for yourself. That's right, not just copying and pasting the dot files, as I mentioned earlier, but actually writing the code yourself so that not only do you pick up coding as a skill, you're also able to change stuff if you want to and troubleshoot in case something goes wrong. So if you want something like this, go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. And this was the inspiration for that corporate friendly setup that I mentioned earlier, by the way, minimalistic colors, sweet little way bar over here, dark wallpaper, all that fun stuff that looks pretty sweet when you're using it on the job. Now, let's go back to Rosé Pine. This Rosé Pine setup would be more something that you would be using at home. It looks also pretty good. You just have to match it with the right wallpaper so that it doesn't look weird. That's it. So that's for the first one. That's why no having no goal is quite a disaster and why you should actually plan a goal and how you should go about doing that. The second thing is choosing the wrong tools. Now, as for tools, what I have to tell you is that less is more and simple is better. So if you're starting out and you've been using or you've been using Hyperland for less than a year, pick simple tools that mesh together quite nicely. So that would be something like Rafi for your app launcher. I'm also using Rafi for this theme switcher over here, as well as this Waybar. Okay, this is actually the wallpaper switcher, as well as the Waybar layout switcher over here. I'm using Rafi for it all. And as you can see, it looks pretty sweet and gets the job done perfectly. So that's going to be Rafi. Then let's say Waybar for your status bar. And then this is what you see, right? I've already shown you the different layouts. And then Sway and see for your notifications. As you can see, they look pretty good as well with this animation. All of these are tools that you can configure by learning very simple syntax. You're not actually coding anything, like you're not writing Python, you're not writing Java or any of those languages. You're basically editing JSONC files and style.css files, which just barely classifies as coding at all. So you're pretty much not coding. However, if you were to use stuff like QuickShell and AGS, which are different desktop shell frameworks that allow you to create this sort of stuff, but then all unify it under one single language and keep it in under one single umbrella, right? You go literally coding inside of a text editor or IDE to design the different aspects of the setup that I just mentioned from your lock screen to your logout menu, like this one, along with all the other different parts that I showed you, you're going to have to be writing a language called QML in QuickShell or JavaScript in AGS if you want to actually make something like this. And let me tell you, if you have not dealt with making desktop shells in any language before, let alone QML or JavaScript, or hell, even touched a line of code in your life, it's going to be quite the ordeal for you to just up and get started with something as complicated as this. Which is why the tools that you pick, okay, we on one hand, we have the simpler tools, which mesh together quite nicely. And on the other hand, we have just full-blown desktop shells that you write using full-on programming languages. They're completely different domains. And so it would be a better idea for you to get to a good level of proficiency in the former tools that I mentioned, the ones that fit together quite nicely and still look like they're a part of the same setup. By those, I mean wlog out here. And for the lock screen, we have hyperlock itself. This is the hyperlock lock screen. And then Sway and C for notifications. Waybar for our status bar and Rafi for our app launcher, all of which, by the way, I show you how to configure inside of Hyper Accelerator. So as for Waybar specifically, there's an hour and a half long module around that called status sorcery. And as for Rafi and everything else, we cover that in this theme switchers module itself. So if you want that, you can click the link and check it out. Now, as for the second point, that is why you should not choose the wrong tools. Choose tools that are first of all simple, get the hang of them, and once you can rice them with your eyes closed, then you can move on to the more advanced tools like QuickShell or AGS and start writing basically code in order to theme your setup with desktop shells. Okay, The last one is quite a fun one because it's chasing after others. 
Now, the last one's honestly a mistake that I made too often after having been rising for so long. I saw a bunch of setups on r slash Unix pawn, right? I got inspired by them, and then I decided to make my own setup. So everything's great. The only thing is, this inspiration soon became more like chasing someone else's version of pretty. So I kept rising my setup the same way that all the r slash Unix pawn pros were, and I found that my setup was just a hassle to use and didn't even look pretty to me. Like on their own, the setups that I found were actually pretty nice, okay? But when I tried to do that, when I tried to do the same thing, it was most likely a lack of skill, but not just that, but then just a lack of desire in order to get my setup to look the exact same way without my own flair added to it. Whatever the case, okay, it was just a hassle to use and didn't even look pretty to me. And after doing this lots of times, I finally learned my lesson, plotted down exactly what I wanted for my setup as I showed you earlier, and went about making that exact thing, which is what you're seeing right here. This is the exact setup that I was able to come up with when I talked about writing th stuff down. Now the setup that I had before, okay, I had an outline of it in my mind, the one that I had before this, and then I went about creating it, but this setup was the first time that I actually wrote it down, wrote down what I wanted from a setup, and went about making it a reality. So yeah, that's what went into making this particular setup. And because I made it myself from complete scratch, it has just the right number of features, not too little and not too many. And all the features that I would actually use, like nightlight and game mode, if I wanted to play some games or just basically extract every single little bit of performance out of this computer, what it does is basically turns off animations, blur, rounded corners, gaps, everything to give you a pretty minimalistic setup. And this one would actually go pretty well with a different layout of configured called ultra minimal because there's no gap between the status bar and the window. That is exactly why it's so useful to have a switcher like this one, which is pretty much exactly also what I teach you inside the program. So if you want, you can go ahead, check it out, and find it for yourself right here. Now, don't make the same mistake that I did of chasing after something that wasn't true to me and what I wanted. Find your own groove. The kind of setup that you personally like, the number of features you personally need, all that sort of stuff, just write it down and then go about implementing it. That's it. Those are the main mistakes that I made after having rising, having raced Hyperland for quite a long time. And that's what I wanted to tell you. If you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, as well as a wallpaper switcher that looks just as stunning as this one over here, along with everything else that I mentioned, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.